episode three of Harry and Meghan on Netflix. Key highlights for me. The half-sister of the father was clearly a narcissist. There was a little um, headline that was shown that apparently she had called Megan a narcissist and said something like, you know, like Harry's marrying, marrying this narcissist or something. And um, it was very obvious from her daughter's um, interview and some of the other details, the classic um, scenario of when somebody becomes famous and then some random person that they've not seen for 10 years all of a sudden gets in touch and that's like that's like the exact person who has not been involved in your life who says to the tabloids that they raised you so her auntie her father's a half sister am i getting it correctly sorry not the father's half sister i think the father's sister um or whatever she is, um, claims that she raised Megan, and she, Megan had actually not seen her since she was two years old. Uh, so all of a sudden, when Megan becomes this thing in the media, she pops up out of nowhere and tells the tablets that she raised Megan, and that she's a narcissist. And then because of her, I don't quite understand why. I find that a lot of things in the documentary are. Um, kind of implied and there's this assumption that perhaps the audience the viewers have been keeping up with the details of the news and like all the lies and that this is gonna fill in the missing gaps but like I haven't kept up with the news because I'm I don't want to like spend my energy on these lies and so this documentary explaining the truth of the matter, I kind of wanted it to be more detailed, but I guess there's a lot of stuff they can't say because they also, like, want to remain factual to what they know and not speculate. So, uh, I don't understand everything from this documentary. Some I find a lot of stuff very, very um, brief and, like, just filling in missing gaps for other stories that we don't have. But I guess they also don't have it. So, her auntie shows up and says that she raised her and she, it was a complete lie. And then she had a great relationship with her um, niece. Sorry, so it was her half-sister. It's very confusing. It's her, it's her half-sister because it was her niece. So it was her half-sister's daughter. I'm sure a lot of you guys uh, were correcting that. Um, so her half-sister shows up and says that she raised her. So yeah, her half-sister was a lot older than her, like 17 years older. I managed to get that right. I'm pretty sure that was correct. 17 years older, so it's her father's child, her father's daughter with another woman. Um, and so she shows up and says that she raised her. And her daughter has a great relationship with Me Megan, but she couldn't be invited to the wedding because apparently, like, the people who manage um, the royal family's communications and relationships advised her against it because they would have to explain um why the half sister is not invited and the niece is invited what confuses me about that is that's a completely normal thing in everyone's family i mean you engage with some family members and you don't engage with other family members plus the fact that there's been lies in the media from this half sister i don't really understand why it's an issue that she has to explain why she's not invited to the wedding i don't really understand why so my partner says it's because they have to create this perfect family image and stuff, but that's such, um, that's such a, like, uh, pr such a pretentious facade that we all know is not true. So why would this be relevant and applicable to not invite someone that she engages with in to her wedding because she has to she has this public responsibility to explain that she doesn't have a relationship with her half sister but she has a relationship to her daughter i don't understand what's a, why that's a problem it seems completely normal to me so i didn't really understand this then i did not understand what happened with her father and the media all they said was that her father there was some there was some implications that her father had spoken 
like sold images of himself to the media which i don't understand why it's a problem for him to sell images of himself um unless they're like images of megan that are not supposed to be out there or something and then she realized that she'd been texting her father's phone and the person texting back is not her father so i didn't really understand like was his phone stolen was it hacked had he given his phone to somebody from the tabloids to try to manipulate reactions out of her because the text messages that they were showing um that this per this other person whether it be some type of paparazzi or something the text messages that she was getting sounded very manipulative very narcissistic very kind of sick somebody saying oh like if i died maybe you'd be sad or something like that um so I don't even understand, did he really have a heart attack? Was he in the hospital? What happened to her father? Did he die in the hospital? Has, has she like, just not heard from him since then? Because they didn't explain, they just said that um, we never spoke with him when, like during that period of time when they were trying to get in touch. They didn't say if they heard of him or saw him or has he posted on Instagram since then? Is he alive? I didn't, I didn't understand at all what happened with this. Maybe some of you guys know the story, you can like post it in the comments, but I mean my partner said or oh, maybe he had just been manipulated or brainwashed by some media company to say like, oh if you like we'll pay you money if you let us text Megan from your phone to try to get a reaction out of her or something like that and then we can publish that she said some mean things to her dad or she argued with her dad or something. Which is really, really sick. To find out like all these sick things that people in the media do and also like all this stuff about this unwritten contract between the royal family and these newspapers that they give them publicity essentially and that they give them like good publicity as long as they perform for them and they stay in their good books and like the second they don't please these newspapers that they can print whatever lies or horrible things about them i don't understand why like defamation laws don't apply to newspapers and tabloids because if they apply to everybody else like we can't go online publicly even on social media and express an opinion there's stories of people being uh, sued by businesses because they gave a bad review online publicly and said oh like th there was like a woman who felt like she was way overcharged by a vet and she posted on her instagram and she had a fair amount of followers and so people started like calling this vet because like animal lovers calling this vet and abusing the vet saying how could you like overcharge like for an animal that's sick and in need taking advantage and exploiting exploiting that situation and abusing this uh, vet and also like i guess he had a loss of business and so this vet sued the woman and on on the grounds that his um he, like he's allowed to charge whatever he wants essentially um like there's no evidence like that his prices were like comparable or something like it doesn't actually matter it's just the simple fact that she said this about him and it affected his business negatively uh i don't really understand how that case worked because it's not her fault if people call him and abuse him she just gave a public review we all give reviews of businesses so i don't really understand how that was like a defamation case because she said that she the prices were like um overcharging but that's like an opinion i don't understand how like did they even compare the prices even if the prices were like competitive or like uh, average on the market i mean what kind of case is that but at the same time, newspapers, tabloids can post lies consistently, like non-factual information about celebrities and public figures that make them look bad. Even the royal family, who are supposed to be in the documentary, described as such high status, so import important, you know, like the Queen has done so much work for this country. So why is it, how is it possible that these newspapers are like manipulative gangs that basically say, you're going to give us something entertaining to sell so we can make money, otherwise we're going to make you look bad. And either way, we're still going to sell and make money. So it's like, really, you're under our thumb. I don't understand how the royal family is under their control. Like with the with the commentators saying, I mean, th some of the people in the interview saying that so these people have posted terrible things about your family, horrible, horrible things about your family, and you have to perform for them. It's like extremely sick. It's just uh, really uh, hard to watch and, and realize that 
anybody has to go through this. I'm not a particular, particularly fan of, of having a monarchy or having like the status of importance. I'm not a fan of like celebrity culture in terms of fanatics and people like going out of their way to, to um, like put people on a pedestal or treat them as though they're like special um, or more valuable than other human beings who contribute to society equally. But um, I still have to have like sympathy and empathy for them for what they go through on both sides it's wrong obviously they enable this uh, and they kind of want this publicity um and that's where the their compromise comes from in celebrity culture is that they want the publicity because they want to be seen because that's how they kind of are funded like in the documentary it's saying essentially as taxpayers like we're, we're funding them and their lives so they're being they're, they're, they feel responsible to allow the public into their personal and private lives, um, which I don't really understand how that works or why that's the case. I, I would be, like, I don't understand why anybody wants to know and pry into their personal lives. It just seems really sick of anybody, even if we fund them as taxpayers because we believe in a monarchy or because most of us, I guess, do it because we don't really have a choice in the matter, but... Like, I personally, as a taxpayer or not, just don't really have any interest in their personal private lives, and I don't feel the need to, like, get that back in exchange for my taxes. I pay taxes because I contribute to society and the things that we get back collectively. I don't really pay to spy into the royal family's lives. And, like, if I, if I buy an album or a movie to support actors, artists, producers, Hollywood media, and for my own entertainment, and also because I want to support, like, artists, musicians, um, it, it's, not like a, it's not like a payment for me to pry into their private lives. I really don't believe in this aspect of the entertainment industry. Uh, I think that the work that people do should be valued for what it is and that their personal lives should be left alone i honestly i just don't how any of this paparazzi stuff works why there's no law why people are ha have no protection against it people that date famous people or into the royal family and what i understand the most because in the documentary they said all oh, to megan that like there's nothing we can do that people are stalking with cameras because of who you're dating how is that a reason? How is that a justification? How is that an explanation because of who you're dating? What does that mean? Like, it means anything goes. Once you're dating a member of the royal family or once you're dating a celebrity, you're automatically giving permission for people to stalk you with cameras. Where's that line where you give people this permission because you didn't sign any contract that said it's okay for paparazzi or media to stand outside my house to invade my privacy, to point their cameras into my windows, which is an invasion of privacy. Why does that law protect the average civilian, but not a celebrity or a, pu or a public figure? Why, why is it about their pro like pu private lives? Why is it not ab about their work, their duty, whatever it is that they give to the public? Why does it, like why does it, is there no boundary? Because their private lives, knowing knowing about their private lives to the point of scrutiny and um, complete like lack of realistic expectation of perfection and all this doesn't serve us in any way and I don't know what people try to distract themselves from in their own lives but they know that the people who look to these people for perfection are the people who are least focused on their own lives being improved um, and, and probably have the most dysfunction and the most and like they're trying to live their perfection through these people who put themselves in the public and they see themselves as different because if they put these people on a pedestal then they obviously put themselves on this in, in this they put themselves down they see themselves as inferior and they're like yeah I don't have to be perfect because I'm a normal person but they choose to be in this position and so therefore they should be perfect and they have to live up to my standards it's all a really sick game and i don't know why it's enabled on either side i would hate to be any part of it i think that the older i grow and the more i learn about fame and being in the public eye the more scared i am of ever being famous i um like to the point that i, I sabotage my youtube videos my youtube channel and like only like um i i, I have formerly used my other uh, youtube channel 
that is focused on spirituality and stuff, my personal interest, I use it as a way to connect with other people. And because I want to really like filter through a lot of um, negative attention to find the positive people who, who have similar interests to me, I um, intentionally don't optimize my visibility. I intentionally don't give good titles to my videos. I intentionally didn't make flashy thumbnails. I wanted people to find me based on the subject, the algorithm. If the people who are like really into that sub those subjects and will be really looking and filtering through stuff and like it made my visibility a lot lower and i'm not able to reach as many people as i'd like fortunately i did manage to avoid a lot of negativity and a lot of criticism but i just didn't really reach that many people and that's like a compromise i made to not um become popular on on youtube and, and get a lot of like hatred and criticism and, and comments that are full of abuse because that, I'm, I'm like afraid of popularity and fame with it's only because this last few years i um found i like discovered that having um having youtube as a side income is a healthy investment and it's something that um so many people are doing because if it's a natural kind of talent for you to, to speak or sing or anything in front of a camera and share with an audience then it's like it's and it's if it's something that you enjoy and it's a passion then it's like it's it's still something that is a great platform and a channel for you to to get that out same like writing uh blogs or whatever you know um, I gotta find like a balance between a, a compromise between hiding myself to protect myself and um, allowing myself to reach out to people because I, I do want to connect and I, I do like all human beings want to be seen to a d degree want to be acknowledged for uh, what I what I like to share and um, what I can give to the world so I've made a, a few new channels based on a few interests that I like to share my um, fish keeping hobby and my uh, reaction videos which is this new channel this human speaks which is um, very very neutral uh, and uh, based on the name this human and very relatable and with this channel my aim is to connect with more people from a more humble space this is not so much of a niche topic of course i have a unique personality and everybody like everybody has a unique personality and something unique to offer and it's all about what you offer um that's going to attract a, a certain kind of viewer to connect with you um at the same time with this channel it's more of a an investment um than it is a, like a personal um intention to to like make friends to reach out to collaborate with this channel it's more about also giving me um an outlet for uh, all the insights that i get whenever i watch something uh, i get like uh, triggered by some things i feel very passionate and i rant and i vent and so my partner um encouraged me to start a reaction channel um to have somewhere to put all that out essentially um i do also vlog um on writer's cafe divinity in love divinity in love is the name of my original channel where i talk about um occult subjects at quite a, a deep um deep philosophical kind of level so this channel is going to be focused on um just reactions to whatever I watch on Netflix, pretty much, um, which is uh, ma my main my main uh, platform for watching um, uh, watching like relaxed TV, and it is relatable because most of us have it. Most of us are going to be watching the same stuff, so I hope that um, you like these videos if you're here still watching this i hope that you like share comment subscribe and all of that and help me to promote this channel as my new project and let's see how far it goes i appreciate your time i appreciate you being here with me and see you on the next episode